You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional-grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we break down everything going on in these days, the ever-turbulent world of crypto. Been a lot of red on the screens of late, a lot of hand-wringing, a lot of consternation. A lot of negative headlines out there in the world of crypto. So let's all get through it together. It is time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down all the crazy action out there in the world's leading digital asset yep we're talking about the big dog which is bitcoin a little bit smaller right now than it was on last week's show we're back below the 16k level listeners last week bitcoin was hovering right around 16,500 pretty close to it 16,478 and bitcoin right now as a kick off the show 15,953 so you're talking down over 500 handles almost 525 handles from where it was this time last week and this is pretty much the low right now as well. We didn't dip pretty much below this at all since our last show. So we mostly held the 16,000 level for most of the week, uh, last week, listeners. And of course, after our show last week, we saw a lot more dire developments coming out on all the, the crypto madness FTX front. I've mentioned on other shows not long after I got off the show last week here on the network list, I went down to the big FIA show, which is, of course, the Futures Industry Association show here in Chicago, where the entirety of the global derivatives marketplace descends on Chicago for a week. Of course, you have your local players like your CMEs and others, but also international exchanges from all over the world, brokers, trading firms, you name it, vendors all come to Chicago for a week. And the first thing you saw when you walked into that conference last week was people frantically scrambling to remove FTX's name from everything. They were the platinum sponsor of the event. So that shows you how deeply... They had embedded themselves, even in some relatively long-running and stayed centrally cleared uh, derivatives exchange type events. So yeah, interesting. The FTX, the contagion had spread pretty far. And so we're seeing a lot of that still playing out right now in the markets as witnessed by 
again, back below 16,000 today as more concerns continue to erode about just how many firms are going to be affected by this FTX fallout. Will we see more firms going under, going bankrupt, halting withdrawals? It's a lot of a lot of worry out there right now. Even though we did manage to threaten 17,000 last week, uh, right pretty much after our show last week. Last Tuesday, we got up to 16,992. That was pretty much the high for the week before, again, dripping back down here. Pretty much back about 1,000 points to where we are right now, listeners. So an intriguing week it has been out there. Let's break down some of these analytics. If you want to see these for yourselves, Genesis Volatility is the place to go, now known as Amber Data. But, of course, we just had Greg... Uh, the CEO of Genesis, now the Director of Derivatives at Amber Data, on our Pro Q&A, answering all of your questions about everything going on in the vol and skew and how all this madness from FTX, how this contagion is impacting the crypto scene across the board. A lot of you had questions. Luckily, we had some great answers for you on our Pro Q&A session with Greg. So check that out over there, theoptionsinsider.com. Slash Pro is the place to go to get the full segment. You have a clip coming out at Options on Twitter. You can check that out for yourselves if you want to taste. If you want the full thing, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. A lot of fascinating discussions there, so check that one out. But coming into the start of the show, again, you can check all this out for yourselves. gvol.io. You can still go to that. That URL still works. Genesis Volatility. gvol.io is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. You can see analytics just like this for yourself like coming into the start of the show we're seeing uh, the average at the money ball hanging out at about a little bit shy of 73 in bitcoin right now 72 75 that's down from about an 80 10 an 80.1 on the show this time last week of course as i mentioned on the show last week intro week it did get even higher it got up well north of 100 out there depending on which contract you were looking at uh, that front contract was at about a 150 i think the the contract expiring this week was at about a 130 or so so Things got pretty frothy out there in the height of all the FTX madness, as you would expect. Uh, the skew, though, not looking like it has relinquished any of its dark side death grip. People are still a little bit concerned to the downside, and who can blend them? We're back below 16,000. Again, there are still lingering concerns about how far the FTX contagion will spread. We were at a negative 10.75 on the show last week, so that's a very negative skew. And it remains pretty much the same this week, a negative 10.6 this week. So we're still seeing a lot of, shall we say, healthy concern for everything going on out there in all things Bitcoin. Uh, OI-wise, what's open right now over there on Deribit, which is still the leading venue? And pretty much both of them are down, but down slightly. Again, it is a truncated holiday week, so a lot of folks are already heading for the hills and taking off. So we're seeing light volume across most major markets. Not surprising we might see a little bit of a, a trend downward slightly in Bitcoin as well. Uh, coming in to start of the show, we had 181,000 calls open on Deribit. That's down 4,000. And on the put side, we're at 100,000 exactly. So that's down about 5,000. So we're a little bit below that two to one level now. It's been two to one, if not north of that, for a long time on Deribit. A little bit less than that now, which again reflects some of the growing concern to the downside. More puts uh, popping in there. Let's see what's open. What are the size positions right now? in Bitcoin options. Well, let's find out. Let's start at number five. It is the 19,000 strike. It has 13,100 contracts open there. That is a newcomer to our top five this week. Followed by number four, the 30,000 strike. So we're jumping all over the place again. Uh, that has 13,200 contracts open. That's up 600. It's actually tied with our number three. So it's both of them kind of tied for three slash four. With the 25,000 strike also has 13,200 contracts open. That one's actually down 600 <laughs> this week. So. Uh, interesting, maybe some vertical action afoot there. Either way, uh, the 25,000 and 30,000 strike, both hanging out with 13,200 contracts open on them, respectively. And then we go to number two, the 15,000 strike. So again, that's pretty much where we're hanging out right now. That is the at the money strike. 14,300 contracts open on that strike. That is up 600. So 600 is the magic number this week. And then the number one size position still in Bitcoin options remains that 20,000 strike, but it is starting to dwindle. 15,800 contracts open there right now. That's down about 1,200 from this time last week. So all 600s or multiples they're in for the movements this week, which is kind of interesting. Either way, we still have the 30,000, the 25,000s hanging out there. So the, the Bitcoin size positions are still looking, shall we say, sizably and decidedly optimistic. But we shall see if that can, remains the case or if some of these more 
relevant strikes, 15,000, 16,000, 17,000, start climbing their way up the charts to usurp the 30,000s and the 25,000s, maybe even the 20,000s out there. In terms of action, we saw a steady week, but not the explosive week like we saw the previous week. Back on the 8th, we saw the busiest day we've pretty much ever seen out there from a Deribit Bitcoin options perspective with 113,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, we got about halfway there this past week. Uh, the big dog was the 14th. So pretty much right during our show last week, that was the big day, 58,000 contracts on the tape. So taking last week out of the equation, this is actually a pretty busy day. The only days that exceed it are October 13th with 63,000 contracts. And that's pretty much about it. In fact, you go back to this summer, we saw many days, 19, 16, 15,000 contracts. So this actually even beats the big sell-off day of June 13th with 54,400 contracts. 63,000 is, or excuse me, 58,000 is, is no small amount. It's just lately we've seen more, so it kind of puts that in a little bit different frame of reference. Uh, in terms of action, let's go on out now to the CME front, see what we're seeing out there. And actually a little bit of paper on the big CME Bitcoin options this week, including what looks like an interesting spread. There's about 150 of these big Bitcoin options, the 5X ones, have gone up already today, including... Pretty much 100 of that going up in the 16,000, 10,000 January put spread. <laughs> Went up about 50 times today. Uh, someone looks like, but we don't know, but looks like probably buying the 16,000 put, selling the 10,000 put, an interesting spread. Again, that looks like that's uh, most of the paper we're seeing going up out there today. Uh, last week, let's see what kind of paper we saw out there. And probably the busiest week we've ever seen, which, again, Maybe you would expect, given all this madness out there, nearly 2,000 contracts on the tape, 1,891. Uh, the big dog looks like it was, again, the 10,000 puts in Jan. Looks like this, this spread, whatever it is, this week is the 16,000, 10,000. Last week, it was the 16,500, 10,000 put spread going up in January. It traded pretty much every day, Monday, Tuesday, all, every day it traded. We did a total of about a little bit of a ratio, about 160 by 221 of the 10,000 puts. But it seems like someone had an interesting ax to grind on that vertical last week, and they continue to have some interest in it this week. This a little bit different strike, 16,000, 10,000 this week as well. What do you think about that, listeners? 16,000 or the 16,500 versus the 10,000 put spread in January. That seems to be the hot trade out there right now in the big bitcoin options are you interested in that how much are they getting for those ten thousand puts i'm guessing not a lot but apparently enough to to do the trade or at least make it worth their while let's get on out to the micro contracts and see what the deal is out there and again like we just said big bitcoin options 5x beefy huge contracts out of reach of most people doing their record for volume last week the micro contracts so they did 80 excuse me they did Nearly 2,000 contracts. The micro contracts, so much more bite-sized, did 80 contracts last week. So there is a strange disconnect with these things. They've done two so far today. So tons of action, tons of paper, and just about every other crypto product out there. But for some reason, the small micro Bitcoin options, not exactly resonating. I was talking to some people about this at the FIA show last week and speculating about what is holding these back. And there's a lot of different suspects people are throwing out there. The margin requirements are pretty onerous on these. So that does make them less palatable for a lot of people. Uh, that seems to be one of the chief complaints. But I, for whatever reason, no joy for these. Two weeks ago, we saw 1,229 going up. So that's a little bit better, but still uh, not anywhere near the kind of numbers you would expect given the headlines going on and the overall contagion out there and the broad crypto ecosystem let's keep on rolling speaking of that ecosystem a lot of you are out there playing in bitto options right now my goodness uh bitto right now at about a 970 puts it down about 30 cents from where it was we we're about exactly a 10 on the show last week that adv is skyrocketing it's up to 115,000 contracts that's pretty much 2x what it used to be it was hovering around 60,000 for a long time and that's a pretty good clip not many Options can put up 60,000 contracts a day. Now it's doing nearly 2x that, 115,000 contracts a day. So this thing is, is on fire right now. Let's see really quickly what the hot 
trades are today. It looks like the nine half puts going out this week, trading about 4,000 times. That's the big dog out there. We'll get to more of that fun in a second. First, let's break down uh, everything that's going on out here. Let's look at the vol first. 84.20 on the bid of vol. That's down about seven and a half points. And again, that compares pretty favorably what we're seeing out there in the bid o, excuse me, the Bitcoin vol we're seeing on G vol, which is a little bit north of 80, about 80.1. Again, they're a little bit different products, so you're going to expect to see a little bit of divergence there. Let's look at the top positions out here in Bitto. Let's just do a top 10. Why not? Because we're nice. Share all the data with you folks. Uh, number 10, we've got about 12,000 of the Jan 2024 15 calls. So a little bit of longer term upside at work there. Kind of interesting there. Number nine, we've got 12,000 of the D7 puts. Number eight, 13,000 of the November expiring this week, nine half puts. Uh, number seven, 14,000 of the Dece nine puts. Number six, a buck 72 of the Dece 12 puts. Number five, 23,000 of the Dece 12 calls. Number four, 31,000 of the Dece 11 puts. Number three, 39,000 of the December 15 calls. Numero due here, 44,000 of the Dece 10 puts. And these actually, these are the weeklies expiring on the 30th 10 puts. And the number one size position in bid options right now, the traditional monthly December 10 puts, 101,000 contracts open. There. So that 10 strike, people have been glued to it for quite some time out there. And we are obviously below it right now. So it'll be interesting to see. A lot of people may end up having some bid put to them <laughs> if we hang out here through December expiration. Are you folks out there trading bid Certainly seems like a lot of folks are. Hit us up, let us know as we keep on rolling into the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody. Welcome to the altcoin universe, a portion of the show where we attempt to come to grips with what the heck is going on in the rest of the crypto market, including right now when we break down uh, the top 10, as you might imagine, there has been some evolution in this top 10 over the past couple of weeks as certain names ahead to the exit like Solana. Other names fight to maintain their spot or indeed claw their way up right now, holding at number 10. By the way, the to show you how much the crypto market cap has fallen, it only cost you $6.8 billion to break into the top 10 this week. Last week, it was around $8 billion, and it's been north of that, north of $10 billion not too long ago, so... Again, crypto overall market cap continuing to fall. Number 10 gets you to Polygon. Again, $6.8 billion. Haven't seen them in the top 10 in a little bit. So again, shows you how much evolution we've seen out there. Number nine is good old Doge holding out at about $9.8 billion. So Doge looking sizable compared to the number 10 entrant there. Number eight, we got Cardano, $10.4 billion. Number seven, XRP, nearly $18 billion. It's a tick below $18 billion. Number eight, Binance USD, $22.8 billion. Number five, good old BNB, $40.6 billion. Number four, it's good old USD coin, $44.6 billion. Number three, it's Tether, $65.8. We had Greg on the Pro Q&A expressing some concerns about Tether and its links to FTX and all this other madness going on. This is not the first time that people have expressed concerns about Tether. People thought Tether was being used to manipulate the run-up to Bitcoin way back in its first initial run-up, which really caught the attention of the masses back in 2017 when it marched to 20,000. People thought Tether was instrumental in that and being used to manipulate it then. So Tether, rumors have swirled around Tether for some time. It remains to be seen if some of these start to bear fruit. We start seeing that market cap uh, start to decrease a bit, or perhaps there's just a lot of smoke and no fire there. We shall see. Uh, number two, it's ETH, $135 billion with the market cap. That means number one, still holding north of $300 billion, but not much. It's Bitcoin, $307 billion worth of market cap right now. Let's get on out to the number two crypto asset. Number one for a lot of you. I know this, this period watching ETH get sucked down along with everything else has been a, a challenging one, I know, for some of you out there. But right now, ETH hanging out at about 1100 That is pretty much the low for the heat week as well. We flirting with that 1100 level a few times out there throughout the course of the week. It looks like we did ever so briefly get there this morning, listeners, in terms of about, looks like about 10.94 uh, for the low on ETH. So we did break it ever so slightly back above it right now at the start of the show. 
we'll see if we can hold that that 1100 level for the rest of the week or if we have more downside to come on our last show we were at about 1229 so have sold off a wee bit almost 130 (laughs) handles on the week listeners so uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless the high for the week was about 1275 so we didn't really break 13,000 out there this week uh vol wise kind of similar to bitcoin still kind of hanging out close to where we were this time last week because there are still a lot of lingering concerns out there on our last show we were just shy of the of the triple digit level 99 and today's show 96.75 uh skew wise looking even more negative than we were last week which is a little bit of a departure from bitcoin last week we were negative 12.4 this week negative 14.5 again as we continue to break psychological support levels like 1100 we are going to see that negative skew remain negative and indeed potentially tick up and that's kind of what we're seeing out there right now uh in terms of oi we're seeing numbers coming off across the board here as well 3.47 million calls open on derbert now it's down down about sixty thousand from where it was this time last week puts at about exactly one million it's down about a hundred thousand from where it was this time last week so we're still hanging out at about the three and a half to one calls over puts. So down from the four to one, but also intriguing. We'll see if the puts can continue to gain some ground out here. In terms of these top sizable positions out here in ETH options, this one, unlike Bitcoin, has remained extremely out of the money, let's say, for a lot of these positions. And that remains the case right now. On number five, we have the 1800 strike. So one of the Closer, more relevant positions that has 178,000 contracts open. That's down about 45,000 contracts from this time last week. Number four, we have the 1600 strike. Closer, I should say, (laughs) to where we're trading right now. Not quite at the money, but a lot closer, more relevant than some of the other strikes we're going to talk about in a second here. That has 209,000 contracts open. That's up about 10,000. Then the rest is, shall we say, optimistic fun. Number three, we have the 3,500 strike with 285,000 contracts open there. That's down about 5,000. Number two, we have the 4,000 strike. My goodness, 330,000 contracts open. That is unchanged from last week. And the number one size position in Bitcoin, or excuse me, in ETH options, remains the 3,000 strike with 394,000 contracts open. That is down about 7,000 contracts. We've talked about it for a while now. That December 3,000 strike is enormous. There's a lot of positions open there. It remains to be seen once we get through December expiration how this OI looks after. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to change markedly and it's going to be a lot more positions rolling in that if we are, of course, still hanging out around here from an ETH perspective, positions that look a lot more relevant to where we are right now, 1200s, 1500s, 1600s, stuff like that, as opposed to the 3000s and 4000s that we're seeing right now we did see a big shift like that at the end of the previous year too when we saw a lot of other very optimistic paper roll off the board with december expiration remember eth all crypto to a degree but eth very much loves a quarterly and so a lot of the oi lines up around that december expiration then when we get into the new year it's very much like a new product in terms of a lot of new positioning coming in so it'll be interesting to see we saw a huge sea change at the end of last year it'll be interesting to see if you see something similar uh, this year in terms of paper a pretty active week out there steady not blowing the doors off like we have seen the last couple of weeks but fairly steady all things considered 454,000 contracts on our show day last week that was the big dog november 14th i say steady because the week before that we saw 1.2 million contracts that's something we've never seen before and the week before that 797,000 contracts so it's been more active. We've, we've seen back in October, 669,000 back in September, right around the merge. We saw 743,000 and 612,000. So that puts that 454,000 we saw this week in perspective. It's not nothing, but it's not blowing the doors off either. So it's a steady week out there, all things considered. Uh, in terms of action, let's go see what's going on out there on the CME contract, see if they had a steady week. And the answer for the big CME Ether contracts is, yeah, kind of a shoulder shrug, which is kind of interesting. We saw a total of 51 of the big ETH options going up last week, just as they were starting to put up some numbers, two, 300 contracts a week. Again, this is a new product. This is a 50 ETH contract. So again, not for you and I, but for the funds out there, listeners. I think a lot of people were were thinking it was starting to turn the corner with the, the paper we saw. Uh, you know, the previous week we saw 320 contracts going up. So that was pretty much the high we, we've seen for this product 
And then right now, it seems like it's going back to its normal trajectory. So far, two contracts on the tape for this week and around 50 for last week. So not a heck of a lot going on out there on the big ETH. But unlike Bitcoin, the micro ETH tends to trade a little bit. So we'll see what we got going on this week out there. And so far this week, a quiet start to the week. Only 36 contracts on the tape. Uh, In terms of last week, again, also kind of a bit of a quiet week. Only 54, which is interesting. We Usually we have seen uh, much more paper. Like two weeks ago, we saw nearly 10,000 contracts on the tape. So weird, quiet period there in the last couple of weeks for the CME Ether products. I think we all expected after seeing nearly 300 of the big ones and nearly 10,000 of the micro ETH going up a couple of weeks ago that we would see more paper last week. Uh, For whatever reason, we did not. Again, the same questions lurk around these that do around the CME Bitcoin products. What is keeping people out of them? Is it the margin? Is it something else? Uh, Either way, we thought we would see more paper from these products. Speaking of thinking you would see more paper, that was what we thought when we added Solana to the show. Not too long ago, listeners. We added it to the show, oh, just a, a few months ago, right back in September. And already we're maybe starting to second guess that. Solana obviously very much in the crosshairs of this FTX debacle. Uh, Solana and FTX were very much linked. In fact, uh, we had our buddy, Mr. Greg, in the pro Q&A hot seat last week. He's the one who suggested we add Solana to the show. He's, they added Solana analytics to their platform over there on Genesis. So after a lot of, a lot of hand-wringing, we decided to add it to the show. And then lo and behold, we have this FTX debacle. And FTX was, was very much a big part of the Solana chain. And as Greg put it, he thought a lot of the shady actors of the crypto space we're active in the Solana chain. So he's kind of washing his hands of it for now. Uh, we may end up doing so as well, listeners, for a number of reasons, not just because there are shady actors out there, but the volume is falling off a cliff for obvious reasons. The underlying has fallen. It continues to fall. It was on our last show, 1394 today, 1188 down a little over $2 again this week. Uh, vol wise, it's an explosion. <laughs> it's 216, excuse me, 216 this week. 271 last week. But again, take a lot of that with a grain of salt because we're not seeing a ton of paper to back that up. Uh, The skew, same deal. Last week, negative 42. This week, negative 68. They may say, oh my God, that's amazing. But not a ton of paper to back that up. Uh, OI-wise, we're seeing the OI continue to erode. 450,000 contracts on the tape. On the call side this week, that's down 28,000 and puts 392,000 contracts on the tape. That's... uh, down looks like about 91,000 as well. So not a ton of action. Let's break down some of the top positions, such as they are. Then we'll maybe make some decisions on Solana going forward. Number five, the 25 strike, 53,000 contracts. That's down 15,000 from this time last week. Number four, we have the 40 strike. It's got 70,000 contracts open. That's down about 2,000 from this time last week. Number three, we got the 20 strike. That's got 71,000 contracts open. That's a newcomer to our top five. Number two, the 32 strike, 95,000 contracts open. That's down 5,000. And the number one size position in Solana options right now, listeners, it is the 34 strike with 137,000 contracts open. And again, look at those positions that has rattled off. The most relevant, in quotes, is the 20 strike. And that is still a long way away from the 11 handle where we are trading right now. So... This is also backed up by the fact that the most active day we saw over the past week, listeners, was the 16th with a whopping 47,000 contracts. That compares to 444,000 contracts the week before and over half a million the week before that. So it does seem like Solana options are starting to dry up a little bit out there for a variety of reasons. People have lost faith in Solana itself because it is so inextricably linked with FTX. Also, just from a pure mechanics perspective as the underlying continues to drop the use case for options continues to erode so we'll keep an eye on it but whether or not we continue to include it in future episodes of the show uh, remains an open question right now i'm going to start leaning towards no unless we start seeing a whole heck of a lot more paper i'm looking at the graph right now listeners and it was trending upward and looking great all the way until uh, a few weeks ago then the options volume has fallen off a cliff for reasons i just laid out to you so If we start to see a return to some of that action or some return of interest out there in Solana, 
we'll be coming back to it here on the show. I think for now we might be tabling. Maybe we'll put it out to you folks. Maybe that's a good question for you folks. Would you like to continue to hear updates on all things Solana, even as the paper continues to dwindle? Or have you folks kind of washed your hands of this one as well? Hit us up. Let us know. Maybe that'll be an interesting question of the week we can put out to you folks out there on the crypto side as well. Let's run down some other altcoin. Get out of here for this truncated holiday week, listeners. Let's get out to Ripple. XRP has also kind of been sucked down by this whole FTX fiasco, even though it managed to tread water this week. Is that about a 34.90 on our last show? 35.50 today. So actually managing to be up slightly on the week. Uh, Dogecoin that was at eight and a half on our last show, 760 today. So down nearly a full cent. Litecoin 56.38 on the last show, 61.77 today. So a few. A few assets out there are managing to claw their way back up a little bit from all this FTX fiasco. It's up about 539 on the week. Cardano, 3260 last week, 30 and a half this week. So down a little over two, about 2.1 cents. Uh, Polkadot, same deal, 576 last week, 520 this week, down 56 cents. And everyone's favorite, Shiba, continuing to erode on the week. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for us here on this truncated holiday week here for the crypto rundown. Also a truncated week for the network. So this is pretty much going to do it for our live content for this week. All you on-demand folks will continue, of course, to receive great shows, including our great options boot camp. You guys are going to get a special treat. Dan and I are going to Harvard this week. and <laughs> You guys get a chance to sit in on that session free of charge because we like you folks over there. That'll be a fun one. Stay tuned for that on options boot camp. As well as for Options Playbook Radio, Brian and I have a fun live to tape huddle. We recorded it last week. You guys will get to hear it. Uh, this week, all you pro folks already got great pro Q&As last week, of course, with Greg, as I mentioned, as well as Mr. Matt Amberson, who also dabbles in Bitto and crypto and has some interesting thoughts to say on the whole FTX fiasco and his pro Q&A last week as well. If you folks want to check all that out, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. Hope everyone in the U.S. has a great Thanksgiving holiday this week. And for all of our international listeners, have a great week. And for all of you, especially in the crypto space, it's more important than ever. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you back here next week. Another episode of the Crypto Rundown. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit GVOL.io. That's G V O L.io. Listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>